Sexual violence is any type of unwanted sexual contact, including sexual assault and rape. This can include words and actions like sexual harassment, catcalling, or non-consensual sharing of private images such as revenge porn. It happens in every community and it can happen to anyone. Victims often know the person who sexually assaulted them. It can be a trusted family member, friend, partner, or another individual. Abusers can use manipulation, coercion, threats, or force to commit sexual violence. Victims are never to blame. It doesn't matter what someone was wearing, how they were acting, if they were drinking, how many sexual partners they had, or the type of relationship the victim had with the person who abused them. Sexual assault is often unreported. Healing and justice looks different for every survivor. A survivor may or may not want to come forward and report to law enforcement. Healing is an ongoing process. Each person heals in their own time and their own way. What influences your beliefs about sexual assault? Your ideas about sexual violence, such as who commits the crimes and who the victims are, can be skewed by the media like TV, movies, and news reporting. Sexual violence in the media is usually inaccurate and does not tell the whole story. Your words affect others. Chances are you know someone who has been a victim of sexual harassment, assault, or violence. They might not have told someone out of fear or embarrassment. If someone is thinking about sharing a personal story with you, they are most likely to listen to your views and opinions before they share to get clues on how you will respond. A comment or joke might not seem like a big deal, but it can make someone feel unsafe about sharing personal or painful things with you. Hi, I'm Kylie Verkylan, and I am here today with... I'm Ms. Rudquist, um, and I'm an English teacher for 9th, 11th, and 12th grade at Del Rio High School. So the first question is, do you believe that sexual violence and harassment has a stigma around it? I definitely think that especially sexual harassment um, has a stigma around it, even in the language. And part of what, what makes me think that is that I'm surprised how often things that have stigmas around it uh, tend to come up in the classroom as jokes and it seems like um, sexual harassment is one of those pieces where kids joke about like oh they're sexually harassing me um, similar to I think how um, sometimes homosexuality can have a stigma around it um, or even bullying has certain mm. stigmas around it so I think that's interesting um, that that seems to come up in the classroom often and, and it feels like it's one of those weird things where students are thinking about sexual harassment or it's in the backs of their brains um, but they're not really sure how to approach it so I think that there's a stigma out there but um, but oftentimes students don't really know how to deal with what that stigma is. Is it important to talk about sexual harassment and violence and why is it? I think it's really important to talk about um, sexual harassment and sexual violence um, I think people don't really know what it looks like to be honest um, and so to have some really honest but kind of okay conversations about it and and to be honest I'm not sure exactly what that looks like um, but I think it's really important just to get um, open honest conversation out there especially because um, especially because I'm not sure if that's being talked about at home and as we talk about especially in my 11th grade English classes there's a lot of sexual um, harassment pieces out in the media. There's a lot of um, images of sexual violence, um, both as um, women being being held down or males being very dominant. And so there's this expectation, both for females to be submissive, but also for males to be um, for males to act dominant. And that's just portrayed within advertisements that we see every day. Right. Yeah. So I think it's important to form some sort of counter argument or at least some counter conversation just to say what are what is it that we're seeing here and then how do we actually have a real conversation about that that feels more genuine to how we live versus how the media perceives us to, to act. So how do you believe that this can be prevented or if it does occur, what can we do? Yeah, gosh that's hard, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think that we need all hands on deck in terms of um, approaching the conversation of sexual harassment and sexual violence, but also I think um, people need to start saying something when they see something. And 
and I know that's kind of cliche at this point, mm -hmm. right, to say something, see something, but I think it's also real, mm -hmm. um, in that I know that there are students every day who are bystanders mm -hmm. to, um, to some sort of sexual violence. Again, I think that, um, that that say something piece needs to be a part of the wider conversation, though, mm -hmm. because I don't think that necessarily people know what it means to be sexually harassed, both for themselves. Like, uh, I know when I was in um, high school, I had a moment where I only thought about it when I was in college, where I thought, oh, I was definitely sexually harassed in that moment, and I, it just came back to me later, and I never mm -hmm. thought about it at the time. Um, but just to be able to name what that is, so that you can have all hands on deck and, and people naming naming it for what it is um, and, and calling calling out both the perpetrators because they might not know either and the victims because they might not realize all of what's happening and all of what's going on. Don't wait for a critical moment to say the right things. The words you choose every day to communicate your values are important. When you hear comments that blame victims or make light of sexual violence, speak up. Even if you don't have a perfect response, it still means a lot to those who are survivors. You can become an agent of change. Our words shape the world around us. Whether you are showing your support for a survivor or helping someone better understand these issues, your voice is powerful and necessary in this conversation.